Hi there, it's David Williams again. Today I want to talk to you about inductors in circuits. And here we see an inductor in a pretty complicated circuit on a printed circuit board. We're going to look at a little bit simpler examples than this and just see how inductors behave when they're in, in a circuit. And to do that, we'll look at a few examples. <clears throat> so to start off with, first example I want to look at is is pretty straightforward. Let's say we've got a battery here connected to a switch. And then we have an inductor over here. Oops, I want a resistor as well. I'll put a resistor in here. It's a little simple circuit with an inductor, a resistor, and a battery source. And we've, here we've got this switch. Now the switch is open, so obviously there's no current flowing in the circuit at this at this point in time. But at some point in time, we're going to close this switch. Let's say at t, at t equals t zero, so that switch is going to be closed. So what we'll end up with is this closed circuit. So we have the connection here. So immediately before, I'm sorry, immediately after that switch is closed, there will be no current in this circuit yet. Because remember, inductors are going to try to resist changes in current by counteracting the, the change. And, and another way of looking at this is that the, in order for current to start flowing through there, we have to build up a magnetic field around this inductor. So it's going to take some, some energy. So it's going to take, actually take a little bit of time to ramp up to having some current flowing flowing in the circuit. So Im immediately before the switch is closed, there was no current. Immediately after the switch is closed, there's no current. But after a period of time, current will ramp up. And at some point in time, the current that's flowing, after a long period of time, the current that's flowing will be about equal to V over R. Once, once we've got the magnetic field fully built around this inductor, the inductor is going to act like a short circuit. So all we'll have in the circuit then will be a voltage source and a resistor. Now you can see I've added a table in here as well as some values for the resistor and for the voltage source. Now let's fill in this table for, with basically what I said here. Uh, but what's going to happen immediately before the switch closes, immediately after the switch closes, and then a long time after the switch is closes. So immediately before the switch closes, there will be obviously no current. There will be no voltage drop across the resistor because there's no current through it. And there will be no voltage drop across the inductor. And across the switch, well that's when the switch is open, so if we actually measure the voltage on the switch, we would measure the 15 volts from the voltage source. Immediately after the switch closes, what are we going to measure? Well, I said there will be no current. We'll have no current. The voltage across the switch, well, now it's just a, a wire, so there'll be no voltage across the switch. There's still no current flowing in the circuit, so that means no voltage drop across the resistor. And in order to satisfy Kirchhoff's voltage laws, we're going to have to have 15 volts across the inductor. And then a long time after the switch is closed, We've built up the magnetic field around the inductor. It will act like a short, so there'll be zero volts across it. There will be 15 volts across the resistor. It's the only element in the circuit now that's got some voltage drop across it. The switch, still zero volts, just the wire. And I is equal to 15 volts over the 10 kilo ohms. So we're looking at, oops. 1.5 milliamps. Now let's look at another example. This is a slightly different type of circuit. You can see we've got this connection here across the 22 kilo ohm resistor, which we've designated the R. Now this connection is just a short, so what it's going to do is bypass that 22 kilo ohm resistor. So our current, to start off with, let's say it's been like this for a long time, our current, convention, let's look at conventional current, it's going to be going from the 24 volt source, 
will not go through the 22 kilo ohm resistor because this is a short through the short through the inductor and the 7.1 kilo ohm resistor down at the bottom here. So immediately before that switch, actually we should say this switch opens, just before the switch opens and just after the switch opens, long after the switch opens. So we're looking at starting off with a switch closed. <coughs> Excuse me. So the current in this circuit, the, the inductor in this case is going to be like a short at the start. So the current is just going to be the 24 volts over the 7.1 kilo ohms, which gives us 3.38 milliamps in this circuit. Voltage across the switch, well, zero volts. The voltage across the resistor there, well, it's also zero volts. It's not even part of the circuit at this point. And the voltage across the inductor, well, it's acting like a short before the switch opens, so it's zero volts. Now what we're going to do is break this connection here. And that means we will no longer have current flowing through the short. Our current is going to go in this path. And remember, this inductor is going to, uh, immediately after that switch opens, after if we've made that switch open, the inductor is going to try to maintain the same current flowing through it. So immediately after the switch opens, we'll still have 3.38 milliamps flowing through it. Eventually, that 3.38 milliamp, milliamps is going to change. And we'll see how that happens in a, in a few minutes. But let's just look at the start and end cases. So we start at 3.38 milliamps. So it means we've got 3.38 milliamps going through here and 3.38 milliamps going through this guy. And what does that mean as far as voltages in, the, in this circuit? So if we have 3.38 milliamps going through the 7.1 kilo ohm resistor, that means across there we've got a, a voltage drop. And that voltage drop is the same 24 volts. Uh, voltage equals current times resistance. Now over here, current's going this way, conventional current in this case. Our voltage drop will be that way, and the amount of it, Vr, is going to be the 3.38 milliamps that's flowing through it times the 22 kilo ohms resistance, which equals 74.36 volts. 74.36 volts across it. So now we want to figure out what the voltage across the inductor is. Now let's start at this point, and we want to try to make sure, wait, 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 no, not want to try. We want to make sure that Kirchhoff's voltage law still holds true. So in order to do that, we can figure out how much voltage is going to have to be across that inductor to make sure KVL is true. From here, 0 volts, plus 24 volts, minus 74.36 volts, plus something, minus 24 volts should be equal to 0. So 24 minus 74.36 plus something, VL, minus 24 equals 0. VL, of course, then must equal 74.36 volts. I can fill in these numbers here. VL, 74.36 volts. And the polarity as it would be on the, oops, in the wrong way, on the circuit would be the opposite of what's across the resistor there. So we're going to have negative on that side, positive on that side, and it's 74.36. And the voltage across the switch was not so important anymore, but, but it's the same as the voltage across that resistor. Now, we had 3.38 milliamps immediately after the switch opens. Now let's say a long time has passed. The, so we're going to reach a steady state where the current through the resistance is at a steady state, and so our, and, and our inductor now is acting like a short. So after a long time, the inductor is going to act like a short again, so we've got zero volts across it. And we want to figure out, well, I guess the next thing to figure out would be how much current is flowing in this, how much current we have in this circuit. Well, if the inductor is a short, the current will be V over R, and in this case it's 22K, K ohms plus 7.1 K ohms, and that's volts there, so that equals, that equals 0.82 milliamps, or 8.2 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. We got 0.82, mil 0.82 milliamps, and 
we can also figure out how much voltage is dropped across this guy and how much voltage is dropped across this way. The, yeah, the table only asks for the for VR. So if we have 0.82 milliamps flowing through 22 kilo ohms, that gives us 18.1 volts across across that R, and also 18.1 volts across the switch.